This is like wisdom of crowds level, a half-assed vibes. It's wow. Chef's kiss, so good. I'll be so mad if it's bad. How did I forget this? I'm a fake fan. Anticipated releases, a thing that I didn't think I was gonna be talking about. One of my patrons asked me if I was gonna do an anticipated releases video and I was like, no, I don't have any. And then I was like, wait, but do I though? I was like, I feel like I'm forgetting something. And I was like, but I can only think of like two. And then I started writing that I was like, oh yeah, this one too. Oh yeah, this one too. Oh yeah, how did I forget this? I'm a fake fan. So I, I mean, I don't have that many. I know there's videos out there with like 20 for the first quarter. I've got seven for the whole year. Yeah, let's, let's, I have some, so let's do it. I did list them, did I? Uh, oh, whoopsie. Almost listed them in chronological order. Okay, they are now in chronological order. Obviously I don't have the books with me because they are not released yet. In order of appearance. In 2022, the first anticipated release is Kingdoms of Death by Christopher Rocchio. This is the fourth book in the Sun Eater series, a series that made my top books of the year. I have a video on like, should you read this series? I was buddy reading it and will continue to buddy read it with Alex from Alex Nieves. We both love these books absolute standouts complete knockouts every single one chef's kiss so good this is what a space opera should be and um we're so stoked for the new book coming out in it's coming out on march 8th i have it pre-ordered already because of course i do i pre-ordered it like months ago and alex was like why and i was like because there's nothing else i can do to express my anticipation so yeah um if you don't know anything about it, um, I'll leave a link down below the video where I talk about should you read the series as well as the live chats that me and Alex did for each of the books. And we're super, super stoked. I mean, it is basically an epic space opera that is one of the most just epic things that I've ever read. It is, the world building is top notch, the character building, top notch. It's quite anthropological uh, in how it handles like aliens and alien language, etc. And it's, it's just wow. It's wow. Yeah. I have almost nothing bad to say about it. I don't have anything bad to say about it. I have like things to say about it that I'm like, if you don't like this, but like to me, 10 out of 10, every single book in that series. So, I mean, I would say read it. <laughs> uh, next I have Sense and Second Degree Murder, uh, which comes out on April the 5th. And I haven't actually read it yet, but I own Pride and Premeditation. These are like Jane Austen inspired mysteries. So I actually don't know if I'm gonna like it. I should, I'm, regardless, I'm, ant I'm anticipating this second one, partly because like the cover is the most gorgeous teal color. Pride and Premeditation is kind of like an awful, extremely neon green color. <laughs> also, Sense and Sensibility, I haven't read all the Austin novels, but of the ones I have read back when I did read them, that was my favorite. I don't know if I would feel that way and if I reread it now. But anyway, I've always loved Sense and Sensibility. So like if they had both come out at the same time, the Pride and Sense, I would be more excited about Sense in the first place. So like, even though I haven't read Pride and Premeditation, I don't know if I like this author style. The concept of this series intrigues me and of the Austin's sense appeals to me more. So I'm excited for that. Number three, I have My Imaginary Mary, which comes out August the 2nd. This is uh, a book series that I've actually read only one of, but I, I keep collecting them because I really liked the one that I did read. This is written by Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. Um, they started by retelling or like inventing uh, fantastical stories about uh, several Janes and now they've moved on to Mary's. The one that I did read was um, My Plain Jane, which was like mixing Jane Eyre with Charlotte Bronte and the Ghostbusters. And it was a pretty great sort of like comedic, semi-dramatic dramedy romp. And I had a great time with it. And I felt like I had a ton of fun Easter eggs for people that did, that were familiar with both the life of Charlotte Bronte and the story of Jane Eyre and Ghostbusters. So they, with the Janes, they did Lady Jane Grey, they did Jane Eyre, and they did a Calamity Jane. And now with the Marys, um, I own My Contrary Mary, which is about Mary Queen of Scots. I haven't read that yet, but it's also some kind of like twisted fun version of that. And then My Imaginary Mary, which is the anticipated release, which I'm, I mean, I don't care if I've not read any of the others. Like I would, even if I had never read the Jane one, I knew that I liked it, I would be anticipating this because it's about Mary Shelley, author of Frankenstein. So I am, Super stoked for this. I just, 
Yes, so pumped. So pumped. It better be good. I'll be really mad. I'll be so mad if it's bad. And then number four is the one that I was like, oh my God, how did I forget? I'm a fake fan. The Cuckoo by Leo Carew, which is the third book in the Under the Northern Sky series. So this is the sequel to The Wolf and the Spider. The Wolf, I have now read five times? Five times, I think. And in, in anticipation of the release of The Cuckoo, I will read The Wolf again and then reread The Spider and then read The Cuckoo. If you followed me at all, you know what an enormous fan I am of Leo Caru and these books and I am so fucking stoked for this. Oh my god, I cannot even tell you. This is like wisdom of crowds level of excitement for me. Like that's, that's how much I love this. And so it also better be good. No pressure, Leo Caru. Next up, I have um, Babel or Babel by RF Kuang that comes out August the 18th. This is, I believe, a historical dark academia adult novel by the author of The Poppy War. I finished The Poppy War series in 2021, which was one of my goals. And I had my issues with it, but overall I do think RF Kuang is like a producer of quality efforts, if that makes sense. And this is quite a different type of thing from what The Poppy War was. So the premise already intrigues me, even if it wasn't an author I was familiar with, if it was like a debut author and I heard about it, because like the full title of it is like something, okay, let me just Google it. <laughs> Instead of guessing, I literally have my phone right here. Again, if even if it wasn't RF Kuang, I would be intrigued by it. It's called Babel or the Necessity of Violence, an arcane history of the Oxford translator's revolution. So yeah, <laughs> that title and the type of thing that that is would appeal to me again, regardless of who was writing it. And I have read RF Kuang's writing before and I feel like she will, it will be, the subject and material will be attended to with detail and care and it won't be like a half-assed vibes book, which too often has been my experience with this type of thing. Like I think it will be handled with care and I'm excited for it. But number six is Silverborn, which is the uh, the next book in the Morgan Crow series. Um, this comes out on October the 12th. Um, me and Vish from Books with V, Buddy read the first three books, Nevermore, Wondersmith, and Hollowpox. And so we fully intend to buddy read, at least I intend to buddy read with Vish. And if she doesn't want to buddy read it with me, she doesn't get a choice. <laughs> Hopefully read uh, Silverborn and may need to reread the first three since we kind of like powered on through those this last fall. And we're like, great, now we have to wait like a year. <laughs> so we're absolutely loving the series. It is so good. It's exactly what I want out of middle grade. And uh, yeah, it's, it's magical, whimsical, handles some tough topics in a great way for kids to, to approach it. And it's just so good. I'm so excited for the next installment, which again comes out in seasonally appropriate October. <laughs> My next one doesn't actually have a specific date yet. Um, it's just been announced as an acquisition by the publisher. And then a general fall of 2022 is when they say they're going to publish it. And that is The Magician's Daughter by H.G. Perry. I am suddenly super excited and a mega fan because I, at the end of 2021, powered through um, her duology. I know what the title of the duology is, but it's the Declaration of the Rights of Magicians and A Radical Act of Free Magic are the books that compose that duology. I immediately, actually, I put it on my wish list. I was going to buy it, but a patron of mine kindly sent me a hardcover copy of The Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heep, which is by H.G. Perry. She wrote that before Declaration of the Rights of Magicians, and I'm super stoked to read that very soon. And pretty much like I'm just like wanting to read anything that this woman writes because Declaration was so good, made my top books of the year. So Magician's Daughter is coming out in fall of 2022. And this one sounds a little bit more like magical and whimsical. I believe it takes place in an island in Scotland. And just, I trust this author after having read Declaration. So I'll look it up, show interest. I, I'm excited for it, be excited for it with me. <laughs> and then I have some hopeful mentions, <laughs> which are as usual, Doors of Stone, The Winds of Winter and Thorn of Ember Lane by Patrick Rothfuss, George R. R. Martin and Scott Lynch respectively. We've been told once again, by certain sources here and there that these books will come out in 2022. And I think it's just as true now as it has always been every year that they say this, but I hold out hope. So if that's true, I greatly anticipate those releases. So they belong on an anticipated releases list because whenever these bad boys get released, whenever that happens this year or 10 years from now, I am anticipating it. <laughs> so those are my anticipated releases for 2022. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if any of these were already on your list, if these now have been added to your list, if you are not interested in any of these, <laughs> whatever you wanna let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.